Travis Wayne Good Zone. Elder Renland spoke at a BYU Pathways. Uh, apparently for Tuesday, so they reported it today, I'm guessing. I guess I can... Yeah, well, it's a devotional. Those are usually held on Tuesdays, aren't they? Yeah, Tuesday. Elder Dale G. Renlund of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles told the story on Tuesday, May 23rd, during a BYU Pathway devotional to teach about the pitfalls of farsightedness. And there's a great parable in the Gospels teaching about how when you make a false accusation, you are revealing that you are the one with the greater error. That which you falsely accuse in another reveals the same and worse fall in yourself. Beam and moat. And so, Elder Dale G. Renland is looking beyond the mark in a field of study he knows nothing about. And even then botches the interpretation thereof. Stay in your lane, Renland. What is that lane? I know he's a medical doctor. I guess he's better at that. Because he certainly botched the Book of Mormon. But he also thinks he knows about King Tut's tomb. <laughs> oh my goodness. And he speaks of it in the context of Jesus. For the prophets to keep pushing that Jesus is the Christ, is causing Mormons to look beyond the mark. Because the Book of Mormon says very clearly, right in front of everyone, it's in the learning of the Jews, language of the Egyptians. So it's not Jesus. It also means the Book of Mormon is not even literal history. And so to call the Book of Mormon literal history to refer to Jesus as our Christ, and that Jesus is that guy from the Roman period time of whom Constantine created in the first place, but then changed the nature and character of Constantine's Christ to fit your religion, is looking beyond the mark of beyond the mark. In the learning of the Jews, the Christ is a human, someone that all Mormons can know and see for themselves if they follow the scriptures to learn his identity. And then Joseph Smith tells us we need to hearken to him or we're going to be utterly destroyed by who? The great and abominable church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a mighty big beam, isn't it? And so, yeah, if you're listening and you have no clue what I'm talking about, case in point, they have turned the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's words into a stumbling block. So, let's go over it. He, I was talking about King Tut's tomb and how they knew that the tomb was there in the Valley of the Kings. It just hadn't been found yet. That's a constant problem. <laughs> There's lots of sand. But now they've known where it is. But there he's talking about Carter and he was able to negotiate for another season of digging 
realizing there was only one place they hadn't searched. Directly under their base camp was several days of digging under the camp. The tomb was found. Yeah. He has no clue who King David Ankh Amun is. Because <laughs> he's looking beyond the mark, because others have looked beyond the mark because of their Christian religious bias. <clears throat> King Tut came from the 18th dynasty. And Tawut is phonetically the same as Dawut from Paleo Hebrew. David Tawut, phonetically the same. Just like Utah and Judah are phonetically the same. Because it's not a J, it's a Utah. Utah, Utah. The T and the D are phonetically the same. And so there's King David for the Jews. They can quit searching in Jerusalem now. He was only there for Armageddon. Took a vacation to Jerusalem, which was actually called Salem back then, and it was just a little hamlet. And then because of his visit during Armageddon, they then erected a palace and a temple from which successive tributary kings then gave tribute to Egypt, calling it under the name of Tawut. Mose, born of David. Who's born of David? Of Jewish prophecy? Yeah, the Christ of the Jews. And they refer to him as King Solomon, King of Peace. Salem, Solomon. The N, because I'm the decipher of Paleo Hebrew. And it was real simple, everybody else was looking beyond the mark. So I walked right in, made matches, and then boom, confirmed. The N is used as what's called a suffix determinative. And for humans, it is king. For places, it is kingdom. So there you have it. Samson, now solved. Sun King for example. And so, yeah, he doesn't talk about how uh, in that excavation that somebody had uh, snuck into the tomb before the press grand opening, because that's how they did it back then. When they first find the tomb, they then announce a grand opening of the tomb. And in order to uh, ensure that it's not going to be a Geraldo Rivera event, <laughs> if you remember, you probably don't. Well, no, the younger audience don't watch. It's the older people. So, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Al Capone's vault. A big bust on live TV. So, they make sure that a hole is dug into the tomb so that they can then get a peek that there's something there to reveal to the press. And so the press gathered and, and uh, they had the grand opening and, and it was a big to-do. And so then after this, they then have the archeological team go in and catalog everything before transportation to England, where it would be housed in the big warehouse at the Pentagon that the Ark of the Covenant is. <laughs> Indiana Jones? Come on, having a little fun. But, uh, yeah, they saw that on the table 
was a bunch of papyri. This is common. All tombs have them. It's common. They saw they were there. They were listed in the preliminary report. But in the official listing, no papyra was listed. No papyra to this day have been found or acknowledged to have been in the tomb. It's supposed to be there. It was said to be there. It's now gone. Why do you think it would be gone during David Emmanuel? Ankh is eternal life. David, eternal life of Emmanuel. And so instead of David Moses, as his fathers were named, he gets his name restored because his father, Akhenaten, had a different name for him at his birth. But upon becoming king, he restored the Amun priesthood that his father had taken away. I refer you to section 84 of the Doctrine and Covenants. And then named himself David, the eternal life of Emmanuel. Amun. Tawut Ankh Amun. Who's looking the beyond the mark now, Elder Renland? Because he is ignorant on the subject matter. And he is purposely using his ignorance to deceive and lead Mormons astray. And so, yes, this is the time period that if the House of Israel existed, would have been in those documents. But I already showed to you where the House of Israel came from. Huh. And so it's being covered up. And so he makes use of the Book of Mormon with a beam that is far worse. The consequences for being spiritually hyperonic, hy hyperopic, are far worse. Yeah, so he does this. He becomes spiritually hyperopic to the Book of Mormon. See, he says, the Book of Mormon prophet Jacob saw that the people in Jerusalem at the time of Christ? What? Did you not even read it? <laughs> you quote it? Were a stiff naked people and they despised the words of plainness. Dot 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 and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they, brackets, stumbled, end quote. And then was inserted Jacob 4.14. Uh, are we sure it's the time of Christ? Are you sure? <laughs> Looking beyond the mark was a manifestation of their spiritual hyperopia. No, this false accusation reveals the same and worse fault in yourself. Because he says, as he purposely got it wrong, they missed the Savior of the world. Are you sure it was Jesus? Are you sure it's not the Jewish Christ of the latter days that Joseph Smith said we believe in as our Christ and that Mormons are supposed to be looking for because he's going to be a Mormon? Born and raised in the great and abominable church to save Mormons from the great and abominable church if they will find out who he is and then hearken to him. Verse 40 of the second vision and then Doctrine and Covenants section 103 verse 16. It's plain and simple. It's right in front of you. 
anybody who knows how to read and comprehend what they read can figure it out. And so, yes, it means that the prophets of the great and abominable church are of the great and abominable church. It's a no-duh situation if you just study it. And so, let's go to that passage in Jacob 14. We need to go back uh, in the context here. <clears throat> Verse 12, Now, beloved, marvel not that I tell you these things, for why not speak of the atonement of Christ, and attain to a perfect knowledge of him? as to attain to the knowledge of a resurrection of the world to come. Behold, my brethren, that's an Egyptian thing, David Moses, David Akhenaten, or not Akhenaten, Tawut Ank Amun, as he used, they taught about the resurrection from the dead. Behold, my brethren, he that prophesieth let him prophesy to the understanding of men. You should take this counsel, Alder Renlund. For the Spirit speaketh the truth and lieth not. Well, all Mormons know this. Faith without works. Spiritual witness. Wherefore, it speaketh of things as they really are and of things as they really will be. Wherefore, these things are manifested, physical reality, science, not spiritual witness, unto us plainly, for the salvation of our souls. But behold, we are not witnesses alone in these things. For God also spake unto them, spake them unto prophets of old. Now the story has it, but because it's the learning of the Jews, it's not literal history. And so it's the author of the rewritten 120, well, this is, well, Jacob, <clears throat> it's first and second Nephi that was rewritten. And so Jacob, it does have Joseph Smith Sr.'s involvement with it, but as far as we know, it was first and second Nephi that he had to rewrite because Junior allowed the the uh, copied from the original documents that he and William Morgan were working on in Canandaigua, New York until 9-11-1826 when the enemy had found out that he was warning Americans in the latter days they would attempt to overthrow the government. And so, Joseph Smith Sr. as the Master Mason of the Lodge in Canandaigua, New York, had the duty and responsibility to get him out of the country and take on the responsibility for finishing the book. And thus, when Jr had allowed Martin Harris to steal the 116 pages, he had to rewrite it. And he explains it. You just can't take it as literal history. You'd be looking beyond the mark if you call it literal history. <clears throat> and so you have to keep it in the context. Jacob claims to come from the pre-captivity Jews of 600 BCE. It's technically 587 was when Babylon came back and took hostages back to Ur of Babylon that finally was created. Did not exist for the Tower of Babel which was Beirut, Lebanon. 
and has connections to an Egyptian story of Osiris and his death producing a tree of which came the title of the branch. But that would require higher level learning of people who actually study their scriptures. <clears throat> and so he says, but behold, the Jews, so pre or post captivity, pre, were a stiff necked people. And they, the pre captivity Jews, those who were Egyptian, despised the words of plainness and killed the prophets. Remember Lehi? They wanted to murder him, and so he had to leave in an exodus, which was a very clever way of Joseph Smith Sr. telling us when the exodus for Mormons should be. And Mormons missed it because they didn't hearken to their cries because they didn't know him. They didn't attain to a perfect knowledge of him. And sought for things they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fall. Yeah, they assimilated into Babylonian Judaism to this very day despite the book of Daniel telling them not to, which was written during the Roman period time. <laughs> but nonetheless, they fell. The Jews have fallen. And then it was made worse when Roman Emperor Constantine created Christianity, created Jesus, replaced the Jews, replaced the Jewish scriptures, replaced the interpretation of the scriptures, and replaced the Christ with Jesus, whom Constantine designated in that very creed, verse 19 of the first vision, as not real, having no physical substance. And all of Christianity now push and force and demand the acceptance of the non-scientific, non reality of Jesus. And what's the name of this church again? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now do you understand why it's the great and abominable church? You're already pissed at me and you left and you're not listening anymore. And so guess what's going to happen to this church? Guess what's going to happen to Mormons who do not hearken to their Christ who will be a Mormon in the flesh? For God hath taken away his plainness from them. Joseph Smith Sr. is talking about Mormons in the latter days. And delivered unto them many things which they could not understand. Because you desired it. You desire to believe in Jesus. And so you can't understand how he's not real and call him real as you look forward to him coming from outer space without the horse that Christians believe he's going to be coming riding in on and then destroy the wicked nations to overthrow the governments to allow the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to have their kingdom back and all of the abominations that Brigham Young had when he first settled here which is child bride polygamy among many other murderous abominations bondage abominations and then let me remind you that Oaks revealed that yeah this is what we're gonna do to you and I've tricked you you think it's a good thing because you think we're true and that Jesus is true I've caused you to look beyond the mark. We have kept you in bondage, ye youth of the church. <clears throat> and because they desire it, God hath done it. 
that they may stumble. We read from Alma uh, chapter 4 after talking about the Amlicites. I believe it's chapter 4, it could be chapter 3. Uh, had marked themselves after leaving the Nephites, causing a seditious insurrection and joining with the Lamanites to destroy the Nephites. And so they then marked themselves with red. And then the author steps in and talks about how it wasn't really God that caused this. It was God's basic precept that they were confirming is true. By causing the curse to come upon them. So, uh, yeah, we needed even to go into 15 because this is where Nelson looked beyond the mark at the pulpit of conference because they didn't let me correct the book, the scriptures, and the footnotes. I was part of that project. I know what I'm talking about. And now I, Jacob, am led on by the Spirit unto prophesying, and if Jacob is another one, is by the way, because his new name was made Israel. And right there in plain English, even, is his translation Yah, Prince of God. Because Jacob usurped, Jacob means usurped in Hebrew, the birthright and blessing from his seconds older brother, or minutes older. He was hanging on to the ankle, Achilles' heel, of his brother Esau. And so Esau was the birthright blessing son. Through his lineage was therefore the promise of a seed, physical manifestation of a child to be born through Esau, who would be the Christ of the future to liberate the house of Israel, which in the story of Genesis is Joseph, who was Joseph Smith Jr. That's why 2 Nephi chapter 3 is in there. And that's why the man like Moses is in the other books, because he is the latter day Christ. So you have the cornerstone Christ, Joseph Smith, the founder, and then a future capstone Christ, because the Mormons rejected the stone of Joseph Smith as the founding stone. Shall we go over the vision account for you? Joseph Smith got the name of the church wrong, so Willard Richards had to correct him with Jesus Christ in it. Joseph Smith got the, forgot the name of their Christ. And so we all go on our missions and tell people it's, jo it's Jesus Christ who appeared to Joseph Smith and told him that Christianity and Jesus is an abomination in Jesus' sight. We then get to the second vision. Joseph Smith gets the wrong name of the messenger. Calls him Nephi. So we got to correct him. It's Moroni. Joseph doesn't know. And he gets it wrong. It's not gold plates, it's golden plates. And yeah, it's Jesus, not the learning of the Jews Christ. Joseph Smith is wrong. We have to correct him. I think that qualifies as rejecting him as the founder if we have to correct him and change his words and deny his words from being published in our Doctrine and Covenants. Like 19 July 1840, like the King Follett Discourse, like the Release Society meeting on 17th of March 1842. As just a few examples. So, yeah. I 
Now I, Jacob, and it's not let God prevail. If you look at the Hebrew, the word prevail in there is not the same word that is contained in Israel. Sar is, however, a match for the word that is translated as prince. And so then, yeah, I explained to you, it's not the chief cornerstone of the cornerstone. It's cornerstone and capstone, which is an Egyptian pyramid. The mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem for the latter days. But he says, am led on by the Spirit unto prophesying, for I perceive by the workings of the Spirit, which is in me, that by the stumbling of the Jews, they will reject the stone upon which they might build and have a have safe foundation. And behold, according to the scriptures, this stone shall become the great and the last. And the only sure foundation upon which the Jews can build. It's not the Jews, is it? It's Mormons. But that's why he thinks it's Jesus during the Roman period time, because he is unaware. And in case you are still further confused, let's go to Second Nephi chapter three, because even there it tells you in verse five. Wherefore Joseph truly saw our day, and he obtained a promise of the Lord, and out of the fruit of his loins the Lord God would raise up a righteous branch unto the house of Israel. Not the Messiah, because this is Joseph Smith he's talking about. Joseph Smith is a human being, a mortal man of seed, physical seed manifested in the flesh. <clears throat> but a branch which was to be broken off. Nevertheless, to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord, Yah, Prince of God, the latter day Jewish Christ, that the Messiah, who also will be from the seed of Joseph Smith Sr., should be made manifest physical appearance being born as a baby a human mortal baby unto them during the Roman period of time nope during well in the latter days That's right now. Huh. How have we looked beyond the mark? In the spirit of power unto the bringing of them, Mormons, out of darkness unto light. Yea, out of hidden darkness and out of captivity unto freedom. Hey, section 103, verse 16. The man, Mormon, human, mortal, like Moses, the Christ of the Jews. So it kind of helps to be an expert in the field in order to talk about the subject matter correctly and not lie and deceive people into your big lie. Right, Renland?